Hello there and welcome back. Today we talk about the Godfather from Enjoy Electronic, an Italian uh, company that I'm collaborating with, which I really love, and they created this beast of a processor that took me a while to get to know it really deeply and it became part of my live setup. In fact, I use it recently on my um, gig at Superboot with the Octatrack and uh, an, uh, Performer Mark II. Today I will uh, show how it works, give you a demo of it, and I will mostly use the analog for probably the analog rhythm, maybe I will use the OP1, but this uh, instrument shine really with uh, four voice performers, like what I do. I love to use four voices for my live uh, shows, and uh, I think that is the sweet spot, at least for me, to have uh, enough complexity and be able to control what happened. I come from band, so I think of music as drum, bass, guitar, and a voice. So in that way, having a processor like this, a multi-channel audio processor with four track, and for each track, independent, and independent control for saturation, compression, delay, uh, the double pulse delay, uh, panning, filtering, plus a send uh, for a river, it's really, really great. So, before going on and do a deep dive into it, and it's gonna be a long one, uh, the way you can support my page, you can subscribe and like this video, you can share it, you can become a Patreon. In Patreon, I do more in-depth and also in-depth review demos, whatever, and also share projects, samples, and do also one-on-one. -on -one. And then you can buy from the affiliate link. You will pay exactly the same and whatever you will buy after you click that link, I will get a tiny percentage that will really help to make me keep doing this. All right, so let's go back to our topic. What is the Godfather? First, the Godfather is, uh, I thought when I first saw it, that it was a delay, uh, a four channel delay. I was really wrong. These things does a lot of things. And in the idea of the creators, this is not just an effect, but is a performative tool that you use at the end of your chain and allows you to really interact with your sound. Um, it has a different section. So you have here your channel section with four different strips in a way like uh, my performer works. So you have four separate channel that you can play with. You have here your reverb and delay control. You have the menu section here, two LFO uh, and a patch bay. So while this is, uh, it, it, it has the same form factor as the uh, Moog Mother 32, and during the super boot, they were actually using it in a super cool rack mount that they actually sell with uh, the Moog stuff, creating amazing thing. Angelo was doing insane stuff. 
Um, this can be used, of course, with any other synth. Uh, I am using right now with the Analog 4. I tried it in my um, Eurorack case, which is pretty awesome. Um, since this has plenty of LED and stuff happening, as you can see, it's very beautiful to see. When you put it on a, a Eurorack case, you need enough power so you can deactivate the uh, LED part of them if your case doesn't have enough juice. Otherwise, you can uh, power up regularly like this and it will work well with also non-modular stuff because you have a gain um, facility here where you can uh, push your volume or make it uh, louder or lower, whatever. So it's definitely something that can be uh, broadly used in any application. That said, uh, let's go through the different part uh, and then we will do some uh, example at the end of the video as i did before uh, last week for the moon i will release some gems and some different uh, sounds so if you're interested in that just jump there and then come back for the demo let me first re remove the things ha ah, so first first things connectivity you have here the patch bay in the patch bay you have your midi in and out uh, through the ts uh, jack you have a four in for your four channel at this moment each channel is uh, a mono channel but they are working also on a new feature which you can group the channel and make it stereo in so left and right and left and right then you have uh, uh, two pairs of output uh, both left and right and uh, output three and four basically mirror output one and two so this was one of the first question I asked them why you would have a four uh, two couple of the same um, output this could be useful for further processing especially in the modular realm but there's already a workaround to make all the output all the input have their separate output that was something I asked. They are implementing a lot of stuff and did that this will be one. Of course, if you do that, you will sacrifice the stereophonicity of the reverb. And so I realize the more I use this instrument that the, the idea is to have a sort of creative summing box. You will have four channel, you put them in and then you will spit out something beautiful and cool so initially i wanted to use to process all the channel and then send it separately to the mixing i think it's not the best way to use the godfather i think you comply with him he him because he's a godfather uh, and just go out with your stereo couple that is where you uh, obtain the best out of the box. But do not fear, there's gonna be future firmware in which you will have separate output for each uh, channel. Again, there's a lot of stuff boiling. There's a lot of um, things that are happening. I work with them very closely. So uh, this is feels like a good investment as a platform. Right now it's already amazing, but there's a lot of stuff coming on but don't do the error of buying things thinking oh what is gonna be in the future buy because you like it right now i like these things right now i think it's a complete instrument as is yes there's some uh, firmware uh, things that uh, has to be refined also they told me that the platform the this mambo jumbo te technical thing but the uh, memory that they're using is still uh, blocked by the producer, so they, uh, they, they in the future they will have the chance to use a better graphic, better um, algorithm adding, not better algorithm. The algorithm already, already sounds amazing, but you will have the chance to change the kind of reverb, change the kind of delay, um, the filtering, the saturator. So it's gonna become extremely powerful, extremely complex in a good way. What the machine does now is what the creative minds that enjoy electronic decided was the best combination of the different part to give you an instrument you can play 
and I love when uh, um, companies do that. I got paralysis when I have too many options, so I enjoy the idea that some mind, creative mind, decided this is how we can put things together and make it work. Otherwise, just by single modules. If you want to decide really, then it's good that you are in modular, for example, because you can decide each single part, mix, mix, match as much as you want, but then it's all on you. I don't want that. I want to buy things that sounds good, that allows me to be creative in my own way, but I need definitely some help from the people that create this thing. That's why I love this thing. All right, let's go now to talk about the uh, main part here, the channel. And we can do that uh, putting some sound in it. So I'm gonna first zero everything. Uh, and now I will play just one track. So this is the clean sound coming out of the um, analog uh, four. So today I'm eating my word. Mi mangio le parole, as you would say in Italian. So it comes into channel one. As you can see here, you have a visualization of the gain. On the gain button here, you can select the dB in. You can push it. I, I like to go low into because then I will have chance to have more headroom, adding saturator, adding all the effects, otherwise it might get lead to distortion. So this is the clean sound. Usually how the entire things work uh, to make modification, you press the button, for example, on gain, and then you have the revolver button. This is the trigger, this is the revolver. The revolver, you move it, and for channel, you modify that, um, that parameter. Uh, so mostly it works with, like that with everything. But anyway, once you selected your input gain, you have the chance to lower the volume with the revolver button. And then you start adding the different uh, audio processing. So you have a saturator circuit which simply had warmth and distortion to the signal. Then you have your delay. So the delay works pretty simply. This is like your send. And to set the parameter of the delay, you have this uh, part here. We will see that in a second. Then you have the interesting double pulse delay. This is a complete other delay line that it um, add two more delay pulls uh, that are related to the uh, time division that you select for the main delay. And it sounds a little, a little like this. Basically here, if you press the DPD button here, you would see this two dots that are reported here and you can move it when you are at zero like here right now there's no nothing happened but as soon as you move it as you can hear you have another line of delay and that come also with this personal filter which is the f filter for double pulse This works independently from the main delay. So for example, now we have a dotted eight delay and we can add the double pulled, creating more complex, interesting variation. Of course you have two pulses. So now we are hearing just one and I move it with this. If I press the revolver button, I can add more. So this is very cool. I feel especially on rhythm. We will do some crazy stuff at the end. So here it is now, the same sound with the delay and the double pulls. 
Then you go into the reverb. I don't know what kind of reverb this is. Maybe a plate, I don't know. The kind of algorithm. You have here your reverb section. We didn't talk about this delay, but whatever. We'll see in a second. And then, saturator and filter happen at the end. So uh, it inf influences everything you hear so far. And then you have a filter, high pass. Low pass. Again, here the kind of sound, the kind of filter, the kind of reverb has been decided by Enjoy Electronic. In future firmware update, you will have the chance to personalize that. I, it's gonna be amazing. So let's now talk about the delay. Here you have your three delay button. It's very simple to use, but the cool part is like each channel can have a different delay uh, setting. So if you move, if you move these knobs without pressing the revolver, the change will be uh, on every channel. So let's see. As you can see, whenever you are in the delay page, you have the different delay time. You have the feedback. 100 is full feedback. And as you can see, if you move everything, it impacts all channel. But if you press the revolver and then move it, then the change will happen only to the... Uh, single channel. So for example, if I want to bring uh, track 4, but I want track 4 to be on a different delay, I press the revolver, and now it's in 4th, for example. And maybe I want a longer feedback. chance to create a very complex uh, voicing with all of your tracks. Now, there's one other thing that at the beginning was pretty different than usual, like the double pulls, which is something that I never see on any other delay. They had the offset feature on the delay. The offset simply split the left and the right channel creating a, a delay between them and pan them at right or the left, of course. This will create something like a, a ping pong uh, delay, but in a different way. So basically separating fully the left and right channel allows you to get more into the rhythmical uh, vibe of a delay without having an overlapping sound that might create muddiness. So it's a different approach to ping pong delay, which is very interesting. So let's uh, hear it on something simpler. So I have this sound. Um, now there's nothing happening on it, no delay, no double pulls, no reverb. Let's play with the offset. So I press the reverb and I start adding a small offset of one. As you can hear now, you hear that the two sounds got separated and we can push that even more. To the point that even the offset can be considered a first, another line of delay. So you have three ways to interact with the timing of your sound. First the delay, then the double pulse and the offset. Now if we start to add on top of this, things can get really interesting and complicated. Let's add some delay. 
we, we can have a just zero feedback. So each delay would just do the delay would just do one uh, feedback. And now let's add some double pulls. And let's set up the double pulls. Here it is. And let's add now some saturation and some reverb. Let's turn off. So this is the start. Very nice. What is very interesting to me is the fact that some of these delay lines, especially the double pulls, it's getting very interesting when you use very slow delay time. That's because you have time to hear more the subdivision. So let's put a very one dotted so as you can hear now even the offset is takes more time let's introduce the delay and the double pulse now the double pulse is actually we are here just one so let's had the second line and we can filter we can filter it so as you can hear right now you have a complex a very complex rhythm that is happening because I have three different way to both interact with time, panning, and reverb. I forgot to mention, you can pan, of course, your signal. No, I actually... Left, right, and if you press shift and pan, no, was, sorry, pan and pressing the revolver, you can decide the stereo spread, you see that? So this is full stereo spread and this is a very narrow stereo spread. So this is very cool when you use, a, um, for example, a kick. Let's try with a kick. So let's me move, let's add this. So this kick, for example, I have just one kick. That's it. All right, so let's see with that only what kind of rhythm I will create. As you can hear, there's uh, interesting stuff going on. And if you play with it, uh, double pulls, it's where you can start finding. You can hear there's already hear how there's a, a now more interesting subtle rhythmic variation. Here, I just changed a few a few parameters. And then we can add some feedback. Let's hear without any uh, stereo offset. Now it's all center. Let's add more feedback. Now you don't hear the delay because Here it is. So, 
you can experiment, of course, and get very creative. Now, for example, I'm moving between the channel and I will do some uh, example. This need a little more tinkering to get into interesting um, stuff. So another things that I ask them is, uh, and they already did it, like, as you can hear, when you change the time, you have the, uh, how you call the tape, when you move a tape. And that uh, there's a modality already where you can uh, have not the whatever. So, just so you know, if you don't like that, you can modify it. Okay, there's still feedback going because it was... There it is. Ah, all right. Uh, that said, so this makes you for a complicated but enjoyable ride if you want to get into that or stay in these beautiful territories that are Definitely the easiest way you can use this thing. All right, so these explain mostly how the channels work. A lot of uh, possibility. Uh, uh, the reverb, oh, we didn't touch the reverb. Let's talk about that. The reverb is the only uh, effect that is shared, so you decide the reverb for the entire machine. And this is basically your send control. So, you have sides. Reverb that I think it's the... Uh, the one is the decay. And one is the room sides. And then you have a filter. Right now, it's just a high pass filter, but they will modify that too. Also, I asked to have a little more um, playability in the filter. They are very strong and like the, the filtering happened very fast, but they will change that and make it more, uh, have like a different logarithmic curve. So the reverb again is the only effect that is shared. And we didn't touch the other uh, effects, if you want to call it effects, that is the compressor. You press the compressor and now you have a very easy to understand compressor page. Uh, right now, for example, you just press the revolver and you go in the track. So I'm in track one. As you can see, I have a threshold of minus uh, 18, whatever, you move it here, then you have your ratio, attack and release, and then your markup, and you can sidechain the other to one track, which is pretty awesome. If you have a kick or whatever, you can tell the other track sidechain to track one, so it will create a sidechaining effect. Um, this is, is pretty cool to have these, especially if you have a very dynamic sources. My sources are really not dynamic because I use synth and I never really work a lot in the velocity of it, which is a shame, I should, but it's fine and it's great to have. And compressor, of course, is separate for each track. Okay, now... We cover everything except the LFO. LFO, you have two of them. When you go in the LFO page, you have a master LFO destination that you select just rotating. And but they will add more destination. Right now we have reverb amount, reverb filter, master level and mode. To activate that, let's say we want to activate on the master level, and this is gonna be global. You select that, 
and now you have your you can hear it you can change the shape by pressing shift and moving so you have this shape for example now you have a sort of tremolo now this LFO also is working on something else so it might create uh, something let me remove from everything so here it is you can again now it's on the reverb filter now it's in the reverb amount of course you can make it slower and if you press you can see what happened here this is the global amount of what happened here you see on the master here on the channel to make it work on the channel you have to decide first let's uh, put that nothing happened now on anything and let's say we want to LFO the river of this channel so you press the encoder the revolver press the LFO and now you can select what happened so let's LFO the river so now not only you have to decide the amount of it but you have to decide the amount per channel so to do that you press this and you move this so as you can hear this is positive amount this is negative amount so considering my reverb is zero now let's eat positive amount you can see that we can do a slower thing and as you can hear, reverb no reverb you have two lfo each lfo can have different things so let's add now lfo2 on the same track and let's uh, i don't know put on level and we will use just to hear uh, that so again that and now this will impact on the level let's put it on the delay for example here it is now it activated the delay or not so at this moment uh, you cannot sync the uh, lfo to the bpm but they are released today probably uh, they just needed the new firmware in which you can do that so I, I couldn't have it for the demo but it's gonna be a, a question of day and then you will have that which is pretty awesome for many reasons because you can automate the delay coming in and off and there's the last interesting thing that we have to talk about and then we finished which is the three different modes of the delay work so the basic one let me actually first uh, deactivate everything because i want to be able to so I, i'm sorry that we use this sound for all the demo but it's important to understand what happened so having that it's allowed that to us to be more um, you know on point so let's the first basic delay is what we hear so far it's a regular delay you de decide with this knob the sound of it and that's it you have this button if you press it you kill the delay as you can hear and there's two ways to kill the uh, feedback in this case you kill completely the delay if you press time you set feedback to zero no matter what it is at the moment so for example if it's 100 you press time and the feedback goes to one uh, now if you press shift and press this button you see the three other possibilities so normal add change so 
head. What is head? Head, basically, you can play your thing and nothing is fed through the delay engine unless you press the button. What happens is that as long as the button is pressed, there's gonna be a delay. The moment the uh, button is unpressed, the delay disappears. Now, there's interesting things you can do with that. For example, let's set the feedback to 100. Now, as soon as I press this, it will record its buffer and then it will repeat forever. Let's try. And the cool thing is that you can create a very small snippet of it and this is a great performative tool. And you can decide, of course, with your delay button to introduce it or remove it. Now, in add mode means that if I press the button again, I will overdub, but not, I will dub, not overdub. I will keep what I recorded and add on top. So, for example, Let's turn off the uh, sequence. This is what I record. Ah, I was like, what's happening here? Because that is, uh, I was in track four. So, uh, so this is what I recorded. Let's say I want to add this note. So I can press the button. And here it is. Now, if you change the delay time, of course, you expand that. And if you want uh, to have a longer buffer, you use a low, uh, lower time. So let's go back to the normal and let's remove the feedback. So now let's have like a fourth. So again, that was the uh, add. Let's try the change. Change works exactly like that. So let's let's record that. There's nothing sent to the delay buffer. Let's record now one uh, snippet. So you press. Ah, right, let's put again 100%. Now I, I got uh, uh, um, clickiness, which is fine. The DPD works with that, so you can create interesting texture. Now, a uh, differently than uh, add, uh, change, the uh, add, if I press the button, you will erase part of the buffer to record more stuff. So let's say I want to record this and I want to have the, a longer, uh, note so oh. so here it is and also you can record silence to create rhythmical stuff And here it is, right now I have uh, my sequence and I can introduce this texture that I did. Another interesting way to use this, it's with LFO. So, 
let's remove the feedback so you clear the buffer now we use let's use a change again uh, and we select on LFO 2 that is now a square so it will turn on and off we select mode so what it does it automatically press that so by now if I, I can play my uh, I will play my thing and this will record automatically the buffer I can put a slower for example now it's very slow now it's trigger so I can every time that this is trigger it will record a different part and since this is not really synced you will have an ever evolving and changing stuff I feel this works best with slow slower time let's clear the feedback Unexpected, unexpected thing. From here, very nice to me. And then you can add the offset. Let's see. It. It's beautiful and special from here to here. We can also try to use it on add, and that will create a continuous overdubbing on things that, of course, will lead to some very mushy result. everything recorded and recorded all right i think with these we cover all the parts of the godfather it was a long ride ah, 47 minutes of course um now i will just uh publish and play some uh example like i did last time so i hope you will enjoy that I want to conclude the video and uh, explain, not explain, but give me, give my opinion on that. Who is the Godfather for? If you're looking for a simple delay or reverb pedal, which you set and go, this is not for you. This is a full instrument that needs playing. It's a uh, it's in online on uh, the kind of stuff that I love. I want to have hands-on control, I want to interact with my instrument, and that's why these with the uh, analog for with the performer is a great instrument. It is a great inv invest investment because I know how invested uh, enjoy the guys from enjoy uh, electronics are. So it will allow you for years of pliability you have already everything in front of you and it sounds pretty great it definitely needs some learning and not because getting to the point that you do the simple delay like we listened before it's super simple it takes a second but if you want to really learn uh, in depth how these things work then you need some time and some um, you know knowledge uh, and also to get uh, to get 
to get this instrument, what this instrument is. It took me a few weeks to understand what was the idea behind it. And when I finally understand it, was, I was blown away. And I really appreciate the uh, effort that these guys put in the creation of this tool. It's also very well built, all is in aluminium made in Italy. They, uh, they also is Italian, so that's why I'm also very invested in that too. Um, they didn't, uh, they really put a lot of work to make it look amazing. And also small thing like you see the LED here that it's lighted, it, it's beautiful. It's a very beautiful instrument. It come with a package that I don't have anymore because I gave it to them back for Superboot, which is all velvety. It's just, you know, everything they did with this instrument was great. So it's definitely not cheap and, and, and it's something that it's an investment also money-wise. So think about it, but I feel you have so much control, so many things in it and so much versatility that if you put the single part together, it's really worth it. Now, question that a lot of people will ask because another favorite of mine at Superboot was the electron uh, analog heat effects, plus effects. Uh, they already asked me like how they do compare, completely different beast. While the, um, I really like the electron tools and I'm sure I will use it as the end of the uh, chain, I like to have before something like this that interact with my main play instrument. So this is a performative tool, that one too. But while this other one, um, I feel has more of a broad uh, um, use in a way like you, 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 you use it with a full track. This one, you use it with single uh, tracks and you have way much more control on that. So I feel that they will interact really well together. Uh, and, and that's about it. I feel now it's finally after an hour time to go into the demo or uh, sound demo. Thanks for watching. Again, if you enjoyed it, that was a lot of work. Uh, please just like this video, share it, buy from the affiliate link, do whatever you can to support. I really appreciate. Thanks uh, from enjoy. Thanks to Enjoy Electronic to trust me and send me this unit to demo. And I'll see you next week. Ciao.